Good morning. I am Carl Thomas. I'm delighted to serve as board chair of the Filson Historical Society. On behalf of the board, our staff, our members, and our volunteers, welcome to our terrific new campus. As we enter our 133rd year, this endeavor is truly one of our most significant achievements. The vision for this campus was developed over 10 years ago by an earlier board and staff who understood the need to plan for the future as our collections and our programming expanded. A key element of that vision was to remain committed to Old Louisville. Our neighbors have embraced this vision and expansion and renovation, which was unanimously approved by the Metro Landmarks Commission at its first hearing. Hopefully, the new Filson will serve as a catalyst in this historic neighborhood for additional investment. We want to thank Ross Primer and Roberto De Leon of the De Leon and Primer Architectural Workshop and their staffs, and Bill Receiver of Realm Construction and his team and all of his subcontractors who have been outstanding partners in bringing this vision to, la to life. Also, we want to thank our staff here at the Filson who kept the Filson open to our members and our public during the entire construction and renovation project. They endured mud, dust, noise, you name it, always with a smile on their face, and uh, we want to thank them for enduring and helping us get to this important day. It is now my pleasure to introduce our board member, Sandy Wilson, who has been a true hero in this endeavor. Sandy, who was previously our president and CEO of the board, volunteered to lead our Cornerstone Capital Campaign, devoting his time, treasure, and talent to this highly successful enterprise. He has been tireless, steadfast, and relentless over the past five years. Sandy? Thank you, Carl, and I want to reiterate Carl's welcome also to all of you and also to uh, Congressman Yarmouth, who's here, and Mayor Fisher, Councilman James, and uh, it really is exciting to be uh, all together this morning. Um, Carl mentioned I've been chair of the Cornerstone campaign, but I really feel it's been both a privilege and a pleasure uh, to have held that position, a privilege because of all the remarkable people I got to work with. Um, and this incredible organization, the Filson Historical Society, one of the very best in the U.S., really. Um, a great uh, community treasure, a regional treasure, and uh, uh, it was always uh, great to be able to go out and uh, express my enthusiasm for the Filson to our donors and potential donors. It was a pleasure because those of you who know me know that I'm absolutely fascinated with history, and uh, uh, I would rather uh, talk about history and the lessons of history than almost anything else. And so uh, that gave me uh, a great opportunity to do that with uh, all our supporters. Um, Carl mentioned that this uh, project really began a while back, and we like to think of it as a transformation that began perhaps 30 years ago when we moved uh, our headquarters to the Ferguson Mansion right over there in Old Louisville. And this has been just a fantastic historic preservation neighborhood uh, to be a part of. And we are just delighted to be able to expand right down here in this very, very important part of our community. I have so many people to thank. Um, all our donors, we have hundreds and hundreds of them. This was a broad-based effort. Uh, donors from throughout the community, from throughout the state, from throughout the region, and even throughout the nation and even from overseas. So we've, we've uh, had tremendous support from all different points of the compass and that was particularly gratifying. Uh, we've raised over $12.4 million uh, and I really wanna, this is kind of an aside but an enthusiastic aside, the campaign is still open. We have not closed the books on the campaign so if anybody feels particularly moved to uh, get in on the action. We can we can uh, we can make that happen. So you could see me or Carl or Craig or Rick Anderson, the director of development here, and and uh, 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 we have a 
a special place for anybody else who wants to join in right now. So uh, I'd like to name just a few key donors uh, that really made a huge difference. If I had all day, I'd name all the donors, but uh, we don't have that time. But um, we are standing in front of the Owsley Brown Second History Center, which has been named in memory and honor of the late Owsley Brown, great community leader, great philanthropist, great businessman. Um, I'll wait for that truck to pass. There we go. Uh, Owsley and uh, his wife, Christy Brown, were among our very earliest supporters and understood immediately the importance of this project. Thanks to Christy Brown and her children, Owsley Brown III, Brooke Brown Barzen, Augusta Brown Holland, and their spouses, uh, we have been able to build this fantastic new building and renovate the Ferguson, and their generosity is greatly appreciated. They were truly leaders in this, in this endeavor. Uh, our new lecture hall, which is right behind me here on the west side of the building, is named the Dan and Francis Street Hall, and it has been named by Bill and Lindy Street in memory of Bill's parents. We could not be here today without Bill's leadership, generosity, and wisdom throughout this entire process, and we're so grateful to him. Some other extraordinarily generous donors, major donors from the foundation and corporate world are the James Graham Brown Foundation, which early on in this process put forward a million dollar challenge grant that I'm happy to say was snapped up by other supporters eager to take advantage of that. The William Wood Foundation, the Carriage House, which is right over there, which has our new entrance to the Filson campus, uh, has been named for William Wood. And they were enormously generous, and we're grateful to them. The CENS Foundation and David and Betty Jones, the Brown Foreman Corporation, Humana Foundation, Gaines Foundation, the Paul Ogle Foundation of Southern Indiana, they were all incredibly important partners with us in this effort. I have to mention the Filson Board, currently led by Board Chair Carl Thomas, whom we just heard from, but uh, throughout much of this effort, uh, Mac Brown was Board President, and he was enormously generous with his time and uh, with his uh, skills and uh, really helped move this process forward as well. Uh, Carl already mentioned the incredible staff and volunteers at the Filson. Uh, I want to echo what he said. Uh, to be able to keep the Filson open throughout this entire project was something truly remarkable. Uh, we continued to serve researchers and scholars. I like to think of them as, and visitors, I like to think of them as customers throughout uh, the entire construction project. And they did endure a great deal and were enormously patient and, and tremendously helpful in, in making, this, making this happen so well. Um, the staff, and I want to recognize a couple of people in particular there, uh, was headed uh, for about 22 years by Mark Weatherington, I think he was here today, uh, and he retired in 2015, but he was director, his fine historian, and uh, he was succeeded by our, our outstanding new president and CEO, Craig Buteau, who uh, used his considerable energy, skills, uh, knowledge uh, to help bring this project home. And uh, we are very, very grateful to him as well. Um, I'd like to recognize and, and again follow Carl on this, our brilliant and creative architects, DeLeon and Primer Architecture Workshop, whose exciting and welcoming design reflects the Filson's values of openness and accessibility and really says, come on in to everyone throughout our community and region. And we have to remember also the construction company, Ware Realm and Bill Receiver, because uh, without them, no concrete would have been poured, no bricks would have been laid, nothing would have happened. So thank you so much for your hard work on this. To wrap up, um, let me say that this transformative expansion is really just the beginning. Um, I could borrow shamelessly from Winston Churchill's words from a different time and place years and years ago. This project is most definitely not the beginning of the end for the Filson, but rather for the Filson, the end of a new beginning 
and we can't wait for the fun to begin. Thank you very much, and uh, let me call on Congressman Yarmouth to come up and say a few words. So it's, uh, it's, uh, Thank you, Sandy, and it's a great, uh, uh, great opportunity for me and an honor to be a part of uh, this terrific event. You know, as uh, many of Owsley's friends, uh, so many of us were, we all know how proud he would have been to see this magnificent structure and to know all the good work that the Filson Society continues to do. As well as anyone, he appreciated the value and the importance of our history here in Louisville and throughout our region. He understood, quite simply, that we're better able to tackle the challenges of tomorrow when we've thoughtfully studied and considered the challenges of our past. As I said when I joined you to kick off the start of this project, the great beam ri raising, uh, Owsley's values are furthered by the Filson Society every single day. And I'm glad that our entire community will benefit from the work that the Society has done and will continue to do. Um, I want to offer my thanks and congratulations to the Board of Directors, of course, Mayor Fisher, Christy, and the Brown family, and all the other donors, the staff of the Society, and everyone involved. Uh, your dedication to our city, our region, our Commonwealth, and to Owsley Brown is, is truly admirable. So once again, congratulations. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. And uh, I look forward to many hours spent in these great buildings. Thank you, John. Uh, it's, and thank you for everything that you do for our community. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, someone who needs no introduction, who does a lot for our community as well, Mayor Fisher. Thank you, Carl, and congratulations to everybody here today. Boy, when you t think about where we're standing and what this looks like. Uh, this gorgeous campus really is a powerful, powerful and perfect symbol for what our city is all about right now. Uh, we honor our past by preserving, caring for and restoring classic structures like the Ferguson Mansion and more than just restore them, we put them to work. There's been plenty of work going on here as well. And what we're seeing here on 4th Street aligns beautifully uh, with the fantastic new Speed Art Museum, with what's going on in Main Street, with Whiskey Row, as well as the Edison Center that's right here in Old Louisville as well. So we are going through a renaissance in our city right now, both of new construction and beautiful restoration like this, a combination of new and old. It's $8 billion worth of capital construction going on in the city of Louisville right now. This new Filson joins the historic mansion with the Owsley Brown II History Center, named, as all of us have said, for a dear friend of ours and one of our city's most uh, generous, uh, distinguished, and compassionate citizens that the city of Louisville has been blessed to ever have. Together, this block right here is giving the city the new gift of a dynamic, lifelong learning center where citizens and scholars can go to learn details of the rich history of our city. And this is a remarkable and inspiring achievement that continues the Filson's 133-year legacy of enriching the culture and educational life here in our city and, sets, and really sets the stage for the next 133-plus years. And I suspect that in the year 2149, there'll be another mayor giving a speech just like this one, honoring another expansion, the new, new Filson, and our city will be the better for that as well. Uh, lots of compliments have gone out, but I also want to say, uh, Ross, to you and your team at DeLeon and Primer, just another fantastic job. We're really blessed to have you guys here in our city. I consider you all one of the best architecture firms in the world, so thanks for the great work that you're doing and what you created here with the Filson's mission and with the culture and vibe of old Louisville and one of America's greatest neighborhoods in all of Louisville is really fantastic. So thanks to you, Bill, the Realm team, everybody, the staff as well. And nobody's applauded after each of these thanks that we've given everybody. So everybody give yourselves a round of applause, if you would. You deserve it. The whole city has been looking forward to this uh, reopening here. Sandy, you and the team have done a great job. Carl, as well. It's not easy to raise money, but you guys made it look really easy. You never sweated. You knew you were going to get there. So great job to that. The Brown family, 
as do, does so many wonderful things for the, our community. So Christy and team, thanks to you guys as well. The open house this coming weekend is going to be a wonderful way for the public to see the great resource here that we have at the Filson. So many people are talking about that and looking forward to that as well. Craig, congratulations to you. Also, uh, your reputation as a champion of lifelong learning certainly precedes this project. So we're glad to see you in your next chapter of contribution to our city as well. And just like what we're doing at Metro Government, Craig and the Filson are certainly leaning into the future of our world and taking the lessons of our lick of our history with them. So projects like this to me are kind of a metaphor for where we're at as a city. We've, we've got our great solid tradition over here that's renovated all, burnished up and new, and then we have this major forward-looking building into the future as well. So when you think about what's taking place in Louisville, that's really what's going on. We've got a great tradition, solid foundation, but we're pushing forward to be one of the great cities in our country here in the 21st century as well. So great job to everybody, and congratulations to all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure to next introduce our 6th uh, di District Metro Councilman, the Honorable David James. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I just want to say uh, welcome to Old Louisville for you all that are not from Old Louisville and for the Old Louisville citizens that are here, hello. Uh, we're really happy to uh, have the Filson open here and, and you know to have the Filson Club in the largest oldest collection of Victorian homes in the United States is perfect and so I, it's not a week that goes by where one of my constituents don't come to me and say when are they going to open the Filson when are they going to open the Filson and I'm always saying they're going to work on it they're working on it and so that day is finally here you know here in old Louisville uh, we have uh, the Filson Club uh, and the mayor worked really hard to bring in the Edison Center and Genscape. And so, as he said earlier, um, it's really a breath of fresh air for Old Louisville. And we're really excited that the Filson Club is here. So, Carl and Sandy, uh, you guys do great work. And, and, and uh, kind of like the mayor said, you know, I know you weren't sweating that fundraising thing. You had it all down. Um, so, we're just really thankful. And we want to say to everybody that, that helped make this day happen, thank you very much. And thank you. Last and probably least, I'm Craig Buto. I'm the president and CEO of the Filson. I'm, my role is to tell you a little what to expect to see when you cross the threshold into the new building, and then we'll take a tour all the way through the whole campus. Through all of it, I want to suggest that you think about a theme of the juxtaposition of old and new, because throughout you will see how history leads to the future. You'll see it physically in the architecture, and in the galleries you'll see it represented by materials from our collection. But practically, as you walk in, turn right into the great street hall, which is where we'll have most of our lectures in the future. And I'm going to tell you something really swell about each of the features. Turn right, and you'll, in that room you'll see that the ceiling and the wall panels almost shimmer and show the ripples as I understand from the architects that represent the Ohio River. It's an amazing bit of woodworking that you won't see anywhere else in the world. Also note in that room donor panels where people have uh, given us a contribution to have their name permanently <laughs> mounted in the room. Uh, you'll like that. In this grand hall you'll see a monumental staircase that is a fabulous work of art just in itself. We're almost finished with it. We have a, just a couple of weeks left to add the last few panels. But think about it, the, the fabricators tell me that it's two miles of stretched out wood, each of those planks of wood no longer than three feet, and each one different from the one next to it. So take a close look at that and take the stairs. Along the stairs you'll see an exhibit of photos from our collection that you can view only by taking the staircase. On the st uh, above the street hall is Caperton Hall, and that's um, a really beautiful room that's about as big as Cape as Street Hall, but it has a different visual feature. The glass all the way around, around the top allows you to see into the treetops and see the sky over Old Louisville. It's really lovely too, so take the stairs on up and see that. On the 
no on the east side is the stacks, uh, f five floors of stacks for storage of our, our archival materials. Extremely secure, they're um, temperature and humidity controlled. And while you're in there, give the compact shelving um, crank a spin, and you'll get to see how we compress six into six rows, uh, one each, well, that's, that's not really the way it works. How we, we allow only one aisle for six rows of shelves, and it's magic. And see also the hanging racks for our art. What you may not have known about the Filson is we have a fabulous art collection. And you'll see some of that in the, in the next two buildings. So take a look. If there's any door that's closed, ask a staff member. We'll open it for you if we can find the key. Everything is open today for anybody's curiosity and inspection. In the carriage house, well, the pedway will take you to the carriage house. Third floor pedway crosses the alley, and it's high enough that fire trucks and moving vans and garbage trucks can all proceed down the alley. And we're really grateful to the neighbors. We had to close the alley during construction, and now it's back open again. Thank you for indulging us. Take the pedway into the carriage house. And in the carriage house, I'll cite a couple of features. Um, it really was the carriage house. It was built two years before the mansion, and there was a great Courier-Journal story about it as one of the fine carriage houses in Old Louisville. Well, there was no house attached to it at that point, but it was a fine carriage house. In that carriage house, if you look up in the lobby, you'll see two brick fireplace surrounds overhead. And those are the fireplaces from the apartments that the carriage drivers lived in. So when you stand in that alley, look back and look high. And then in the gallery in the carriage house, we have a terrific collection of photographs that we selected. Thank you, Heather Potter, our curator for that exhibit, that we selected for their visual impact. And they're part of a terrific collection of photographs in the Filson's collection. So going from the carriage house into the mansion, it takes little steps or elevator up to the next level. The mansion, the first room you'll enter is the Bingham Gallery. Uh, is the Nash Gallery. The Bingham Gallery is the one that has the photos in it. In the Nash Gallery, we have an exhibit today of presidential history, presidential elections, and the people who were allowed to vote during each of those elections as our country has worked its way to allowing universal suffrage. It's a terrific exhibit. I even got to donate my Pat Paulson for President button. <laughs> for, for those of you old enough to remember Pat Paulson. Um, and then from that gallery into the carriage, into the mansion, you will see that we have been able to restore much of the original uh, beauty and art of the mansion from when the owners um, built it and lived in it. And ask staff about particular pieces of furniture because several of them were actually built for that space. And then as you move your way up in the mansion, on the second floor is our library and research center, and you'll enjoy uh, the juxtaposition of old and new in that space as well. On the third floor is our offices, but you're welcome to see those today too. Coming up over the next few weeks, we have a concentrated schedule of programs where we will have a program on the um, Louisville or Kentucky during World War I. We'll have a, a two-day seminar on the U.S. Constitution and how an 18th century document lives, drives our lives today. We'll have a series of four lectures on Muhammad Ali. We have program after program after program, and they're all free during our opening expansion. This Saturday from 1 o'clock till 9 o'clock, activities all over the whole campus, and we'd love to see everyone in the public come for that. Um, I have lots of time to answer your questions if you want individual interviews. So, But for right now, let's cut a ribbon. One. Cut. All right, there we go. And we have souvenir ribbons for five of you. This has been a Metro TV production, a public service of Louisville Metro Government.